this class we will see visakhapatnam tutikorin marmagova paradip and the new port that is to be developed gopalpur port the layouts and the significance of each port we will first discuss about the visakhapatnam port <coughs> the latitude and longitudes are given here they have uh, both imports and exports imports are coking coal steam coal fertilizer lamb and pet coke and export is cp coke these are different types of cokes steel products finished steel products there are uh, many uh, steel making units industries vaisak steel plant so they need to export the products what they are manufacturing pol alumina and thermal coal many power plants are there for which we need the thermal coals which are being exported from visakhapatnam to other ports along the coast this shows this schematically the details of two harbors one is called as the outer harbor which is uh, built uh, subsequently originally we have the inner harbor we have uh, sir vishweshraya who was asked to create the clear opening at the entrance channel what he has done is he has uh, sunk an one ship here so that the sediments will not pass through this and clog the entrance channel so that it can be done very quickly and this shows the entrance channel through which the vessels will go and uh, this is known as the northern arm in which we have berth on either side this side is known as west key this side is known as east key then we have this uh, arm western arm we have a hindustan shipyard also which is used for building of ships repair of ships and we have what is known as a dolphin nose hill which is uh, protecting the entrance channel and creating calm climate inside this this is the turning circle where the vessels will turn we have the berths numbered whiskey 1 2 3 like this originally the draft in this uh, northern arm is about uh, 9 meters now iit madras has been asked to retrofit the structure retrofit means strengthen the structure so that a deeper draft can be created this shows the outer arm if you see the outer arm there is a south breakwater and this breakwater is not shore connected so one of the special features of the eastern coast if you remember uh, chennai port this opening was not there so there is lot of uh, sediment settlement ennur also it was like that once you create a opening here whatever sediments that are supposed to accumulate here it will come and deposit in the sand trap this sand trap means it will be dredged let us say about 500 meters by 500 meters to a depth of maybe 10 meters or 12 meters and uh, whatever sediments are coming it will come and settle here then a dredger will come and uh, this dredger after dredging this material will deposit it on the northern side either by pipelines laid along the shore or the dredger will come out of the harbor and go very near to the coast and then they will deposit the dredged material by what is known as rainbow method that means they will pump the sediments along with water so that this is called as a ramakrishna beach which will be nourished this is uh, one of the soft measures soft measures means we are not building any groins groins means a structure built perpendicular to the shoreline which was done in chennai port it is a soft measure by artificially nourishing the beach 
using the sand deposited in the sand trap is called as a artificial nourishment. We have a fishing harbor adjacent to the main outer harbor. There are plans to build one more outer outer harbor to cater for bigger vessels and we will see the details of this harbor in the next slide also. It shows the satellite imagery showing you the various details of breakwaters as well as the entrance channel and different arms which are used for berthing of vessels. Next we will see the Tuticorin port. This is located on the southeastern coast, latitude and longitude are given here. This also has both imports as well as exports. Imports are timber logs, MOP, urea, rock phosphate, copper, industrial coal, containerized cargo etcetera. Exports are sugar, sand, maize, granite stones, sulfuric acid, construction material, containerized cargo etcetera. This is a artificial harbor having very long breakwater both south as well as the north breakwater. They have the entrance channel and a training circle. What is shown here in these dotted lines are future expansions that are being proposed. You are seeing these two blue colors. These are the intake channels for the thermal power plant. The water requirement for the thermal power station depends on whether they want the once through system or make up water system. Once through means they will not have any cooling tower in the thermal power station. They need huge quantity of water. The quantity of water required for a 1000 megawatt plant for a once through system is about 200,000 cubic meter per hour. It is a very huge quantity. Make up water is one tenth of that about 20,000 cubic meter per hour. So, we need a channel for a once through system to take the water. So, inside the harbor creating the entrance channel is intake channel is very easy. There is a place called as a hair island here. This island is being used as a stockyard for coals and we will have the coal burst being planned here and the coal will be taken through a conveyor system through the hair island. From there it will be taken to many power plants located here. This area what is shown in the yellow color is the container storage area. Port of Singapore authorities are operating this berth. One more berth is also being planned in a PPP mode. Here we have a very soft rock in the surface. We have to do dredging of this rock. The dredging of the rock cannot be done as it is. We have to pre-treat the rocks. Pre-treat the rocks means we have to drill some holes and we have to lower some explosives and we have to create weakening of the rock. Then we have to remove it by a special type of cutter section dredger. So, it costs more than about uh, 1000 crores so far to dredge this area. The advantage of having a rock very close to the seabed is the berthing structures what is being built will be having very good foundation the cost will be reduced. Whatever rock that has been dredged out of this has been used to fill up this area we will show this in the next slide. So, this is the area which is being filled up using the rock material and this whole area what is reclaimed will be used for container storage. These are the two cranes which are used for loading and unloading the containers. Next we will go to Paradip port. This is a port created in the Orissa state after independence. This is called as a lagoon harbor similar to Mangalore which we have seen. This is located at about 2 ton nautical miles south of Calcutta and 260 nautical miles north of Visakhapatnam. 
almost uh, between exactly between Calcutta and Visakhapatnam, latitude and longitudes are shown. The commodity handled are thermal coal, chrome ore, manganese ore, iron ore, charge chrome, ferro chrome, ferro manganese, steel coils, project cargo, cooking coal, hard coke, limestone, food grains, fertilizer, DBM, steel billets, scrap, clinkers. What you can see from here is we have uh, very good uh, minerals available for the hinterland of Paradip both in Orissa state, Bihar, Jharkhand and all of them are being exported through this Paradip port. We have many industries also in Paradip port. This shows the layout of the lagoon harbor. This is the Maganadi river which is draining into the sea here and uh, we have two breakwaters here which are only protecting the entrance channel. The original shoreline was somewhere here. After construction of these two breakwaters from the original shoreline, there is so much of accumulation of sand on this side. From the original shoreline, there is so much of erosion, maybe more than about uh, 100 meters erosion has taken place here. Lagoon means we create a artificial harbor basin inside the land. This shows in detail the entrance channel, uh, this uh, breakwaters, this is the oil berth which is very close to the entrance. Original shoreline was somewhere here, so much accumulation this side and erosion this side. They have two docks, this is one dock, this is another dock, this is the third dock. What is shown in light blue color is already existing, what is shown in this dark color is the ones which are being proposed. Originally the turning circle was somewhere here, subsequently they have shifted the turning circle to this point. As I told here the engine of the ship will be stopped somewhere here, we need about 7 times the length of the vessel for the engine to stop and then take a turn. For this reason they have shifted the turning circle from here to here. Originally they were handling smaller vessel for which the length is less, so this turning circle was sufficient. Whereas, for a longer length of the vessel, we need longer distance. So, a smaller vessel when it comes, it will turn here, for a longer vessel, it will go here and then turn. You will see the Marmagawa port this is one of the best location that can be there for a port. This is uh, in between Mumbai and uh, New Mangalore, 370 kilometers south of Mumbai, 300 kilometers north of New Mangalore and this is about 575 kilometer north of Cochin. In India if you see approximately every 300 kilometers we will have about one major port both in the east coast and west coast. This is called as uh, this latitude, longitude are shown here. This is a open type harbor, it is a natural harbor protected by a breakwater and a mole built from the outer end of the breakwater. This uh, because of this uh, small breakwater which is built, it can be called as a semi natural harbor. We cannot call it as a natural harbor like Cochin, because we have a breakwater. Mole is a construction, it is not a solid construction. I will show it in the next slide about this mole. This is a satellite imagery, this is one side we have the breakwater, there is no breakwater from the other sides that is why it is called as a open type breakwater. Basically a iron ore export terminal, all these berths are placed here. Here we have a shipyard which is called as a Western India Shipyard Limited and here we have this uh, mole which is built here. The rubble mound breakwater is a solid structure from the seabed to the top whereas this will have openings for water exchange between here and here. Now we have planned one structure here parallel to the breakwater. This is used for offshore supply vessels for ONGC to get the required uh, 
materials from Armagawa to the platforms in the Bombay High. Next we will go to another port which is called as the Gopalpur port. This is being planned now and this port uh, originally as a lagoon port what is shown here is the lagoon and uh, is called as an anchorage port originally. The ships will be standing somewhere here, the barges will go inside and out and we have a Indian rare earth limited factory is somewhere here. They export the Indian the rare earth outer processing and uh, those rare earths will be loaded into small barges 200 ton barges and then they will come out like this and when the ships are anchored here these barges will transport the rare earth to the ship. The ships will be of small size maybe about 20,000 DWT and this is called as fair weather anchorage port that means this will not operate throughout the season it will operate only the fair weather. The fair weather season starts sometime in October and it goes right up to April only during this season the operation will take place and this operation for a 20,000 TWT vessel when you are bringing the cargo by 200 ton barges you can imagine so many barges have to come a 200 20,000 ton vessel when we are loading it may take about 4 to 5 days and after operating this rare earth export in order to distribute the fertilizer they started using this port for import of fertilizers also. One of the important requirement for any port is what depth you will have, what distance you will have the deeper contours available. What is shown here is the contour lines, this is 1 meter contour, 2 meter, 3 meter, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15. This 10 meter contour is available at a distance of about 900 meters from the shoreline. It varies from 700 to 900 meters all along the coast. This is the nearest 10 meter contour available all along the east coast. If you take Chennai, the 10 meter contour may be available at about 1200 meters or 1400 meters, whereas here it is available very close. The advantage of having a deep contour very close to the shore is the length of the breakwater that is required to be built will be less. And this is a master plan for the new port that is going to be developed in Gopalpur in a public private partnership scheme and we have two breakwaters this is one of the breakwater this is another breakwater is going to be developed in two phases this portion will be developed initially and this portion will be developed subsequently. And we have a sand trap here this sand trap will be dredged for about 10 meter or so, so that whatever sand that is coming will get deposited here. Then a dredger will come dredge this sand and take it to the northern side and then dump it on the northern side. Here we are using both the soft and hard measures, soft measure means the artificial nourishment of sand along this line taken from the sand trap plus groins. <coughs> These groins are built in uh, numbers, it is not one, one is not built, we have one, two, three. Actually what uh, we have finally decided is to have about uh, 10 groins, each groin length will reduce as you go towards the northern side which is called as a transition groin. There is a numerical studies required to find out what should be the length of the groin, what should be the spacing between the groins. Here we have the entrance channel and then we have the turning circle, we have the berths parallel to the breakwater 
all along this line we have the birds along the shore line here then we have the areas where uh, earmarked for storing the cargo the complete uh, land side development is not shown in this figure only part of that is shown so this is not in the scope of the present lecture the layout of the port to decide how much area is required will not be discussed in detail in this course we have a separate course for this port planning <coughs> once you build the port with the breakwater we will have the accumulation of sand they want to use this accumulation if you see the shoreline here it is here and here the shoreline is here so this area they want to use for the purpose of development So, we have completed the different layouts of ports. Now, I will tell you what are the Indian standard codes that are being used for the design of the port and harbor structures planning and design. You please uh, get the code, it is available in our library. You can download it. First, you please read this code IS 7314. This code gives glossary of terms relating to port and harbor engineering. The glossary of terms means they will explain what is the meaning of each uh, word, technical word, technical word used in port and harbor engineering, technical terms. Technical terms is a better uh, English than technical word like breakwater, fender, bollard, approach channel, boom breakwater. So, all these terms you can get the meaning. So, you please go through this code. Then, the main code that is being used for port engineers is IS 4651 part 1 to part 5. This is planning and design of ports and harbors. I will be describing about the 5 codes that are being used part 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. The part 4 code is modified in our department only we have given the various modifications required. The code was uh, last modified in 1989. So, subsequent to modification of uh, IS 456 which is the plain and reinforced concrete code in 2000 and IS 1893 seismic code we are incorporating all the parts in part 4 and we have modified. The other parts also are being modified. For any subject to learn, you have source material in the form of books, in the form of course, in the, bomb, in the form of conference paper, and in the form of journal papers. Out of all these forms, is uh, if you want to be a professional designer, you should be very thorough with the course because whatever is stipulated in the code has to be followed and if you are deviating from that there should be sufficient analytical and uh, modeling background experimental studies so that you can change certain parameters given in the code if certain things are not available in is code you can follow european code or american codes mostly important harbor structures we will be using pile as a foundation and for this pile foundation we have the code IS 2911 part 1 to part 4. These parts are different for different types of piles like uh, board cast to pile, precast piles like that. So, it gives both design and construction. One of the requirement for an engineer to learn is uh, not only the design, but also the construction aspects. That is why this construction aspects are given due importance for pile foundation. I will be discussing some uh, details of IS 2911. Our, core, our course consists of uh, essentially three parts that is estimation of loads, analysis and design. These are the three parts. I will repeat again load estimation, analysis and design. The load estimation is given in IS 4651. For analysis, uh, for the piles, we use what is known as fixed depth that is given in IS 2911. 
and design aspects are given both IS 4651 and IS 2911. When you go for design there are two design one is called as a structural design another is called as a foundation design. For structural design you have to go for IS 456 for foundation design you have to go for IS 2911. <coughs> to complement IS 4651 which does not deal much with construction we have IS 9527 part 1 to 6 this gives both design as well as construction. In port and harbour structures we have basically berthing structures but in addition to that we have slipways, dry docks. So those things are given in IS. 9527 in different parts. To continue the quotes, we have IS 1893, this was revised in 2002, this is a criteria for earthquake resistant design of structures. So, we have to study this structure IS 1893, study this code because most of the structures are governed by the seismic force especially the structures in Kandla, Mumbai, Orblayer that is Andaman group of islands because both Kandla as well as Orblayer they are falling in seismic zone 5. Tutikorin port is in seismic zone 2 that is not governed by the design is not governed by earthquake. Then we have the British code if certain provisions are not there in IS code you can refer this code British code maritime structures. When you go for design there are two parts of the design one is the design another is the detailing. So a, a proper design is not sufficient unless you do proper detailing the structure may fail. If you analyze the structural failure of structures it is not by improper design but it is by improper detailing especially reinforced concrete structures. Even for steel structures we need the welding details properly otherwise that also will fail. So the SP16 will give design aids for reinforced concrete to IS456. We will not go into much detail about this design aids because uh, a separate course is required for the complete design but I will discuss some salient features of design of piles for this course. We will also discuss a few important points for detailing of concrete structures especially port and arbor structures because the construction methodology in port and arbor structure is totally different from land based structures. We use uh, both precast and uh, cast in situ structures and the joining between them is important and uh, the structures are built under water so a special provision is required for this. <coughs> now we will discuss the questions that is likely to be asked in this uh, particular uh, subject what we have discussed. I have written down here what is a port and what is a harbour and I want you to draw a sketch showing the bollard, fender, berthing structure as well as the ship. You please uh, practice the sketch, do not see the sketch and uh, come to the exam and start drawing the sketch. If you want to draw a ship it may look like <laughs> something else. So whenever you want to draw a sketch please draw the sketch with the sketch in front of you try to copy the salient features a good engineer should be in a position to draw a good sketch. If you cannot draw a sketch properly then you cannot be a good engineer. Then after drawing the sketch seeing the sketch what you have to do is you have to close the sketch and redraw it once again whatever uh, power point you have seen here try to draw the sketch for artificial harbour, draw the shape of the bollard properly, draw the shape of the fender properly 
mostly when uh, the answers papers are corrected the teachers normally will spend more time on your sketch than what you are writing. Then you have to explain the difference between natural harbor and artificial harbor. If you want to answer this question you try to give it in a tabular form two columns natural harbor and uh, artificial harbor. For example, natural harbor means no breakwaters, artificial harbor means breakwaters will become essential. Like that you can say that uh, there is less environmental impact in natural harbor and more environmental impact in artificial harbor and uh, only dredging is required in natural harbor whereas we need the breakwater as well as dredging in artificial harbor. Try to write some three or four points side by side in the columns. <coughs> Next question is likely to be asked is what are the explain the environmental impacts to be considered for construction of port. I have discussed uh, three points in this class. One of the point uh, the first one is about the shoreline changes because of construction of breakwater. The second one is dredging and disposal of dredged material that will come. The third point is if you are dredging in rock, if you are using explosives, what is the vibration cost? The vibration cost I told it may impact the heritage structures nearby in JNPT. In addition to that, it may also impact the birthing structures which is close by. For example, in Tuticorin port we have seen there are already structures and if you are dredging in front of the structures when you are using the explosives the structures also will get vibration that also you have to see. There are two parts in environmental studies one is environmental impact assessment the other part is environment management plan. This we will discuss separately uh, in this class one of the environment management plan we have discussed is create a sand trap and allow the sediment to settle in the sand trap and every year periodically remove the dredged material nourish it on the northern side that is one of the management plan. Then I have written here explain with a neat sketch the components of a harbor. The components of a harbor if you see artificial harbor there will be breakwaters, there will be entrance channel, turning circle then we will have birthing structures. Then we also have the mechanical handling systems, conveyor systems, then we will have customs building, we have parking area all those things you please go through this. I will uh, give you the lecture notes later where we have given some of the textbooks you can go through the textbooks. One of the requirement for any course is that you have to study one textbook cover to cover and uh, one of the textbook that is being uh, recommended is by one Mr. Gaithwit that book is available in our library those details I will give it to you. Please go through this. Any questions? I have written the questions. You have any questions in this because we are going to next slide, next topic. Any doubts you have? Okay. Next I will explain about this uh, vessel type and size. This uh, class uh, consists of uh, st people studying from M Tech Ocean Engineering, B Tech Civil and B Tech Mechanical. This M Tech Ocean Engineering students they have some basic uh, knowledge about the vessels because they are studying a subject on uh, statics and dynamics of marine vehicles. They also have basic knowledge on wave hydrodynamics which uh, the civil and mechanical B Tech students do not have. So, I will be giving certain details of this uh, vessel type and size, but uh, what I will be concentrating on vessel type and size is uh, related to only the design of port and harbor structures where is the much more is required to learn about the 
dynamics of marine vehicles. This shows the photograph of a vessel, container vessel and we have the containers which are stacked here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and the containers would have been stacked below this level also. So, we have containers above the deck and below the deck also. When you talk about vessel type, the vessel type is basically whether it is a container vessel or whether it is a POL vessel or it is a bulk cargo vessel like that. Size means it can be the length of the vessel or beam of the vessel. The width of the vessel is called as a beam of the vessel and the draft of the vessel. So, what you are showing the red color below that is the draft. So, if it, the red color is completely in the water it is called as fully loaded draft that means you can still load onto this some more conveyor containers here it is not loaded. So, that the full draft will be realized then we can have partially loaded draft that is what is shown here then we have light draft light draft means when you have no containers here. The light draft is uh, less than 50 percent of the fully loaded draft and what is shown here above the water level is uh, what is called as a free board. Free board is different at different locations here the free board is less and here the free board is more that is one size. The another size that is being uh, discussed is DWT of the vessel that I will describe later. The another one is uh, what is the number of uh, container boxes it is taking. I have already defined about PEU that is 20 foot equivalent units. 20 foot means the size of the container is 20 feet long, 8 feet height and 8 feet wide that is 20 feet by 8 feet by 8 feet. Normally the containers are used in civil engineering sites as a air conditioned office space. So, you can get into the container because it is a height of 8 feet and you have the width of 8 feet you can put a table and discuss. So, for you to remember I am telling that this is 8 feet by 8 feet and length is about 20 feet. It is almost double the size of your room, your room size is about 10 feet by 9 feet, 90 square feet is given for a student in hostel accommodation. So, this will be about 20 feet by 8 feet that is 160 feet square feet is there. We have double the size also is there 40 foot container is also there 40 feet by 8 feet by 8 feet is also there. So, this 20 feet by 8 feet by 8 feet it is called as 1 TEU and uh, mostly we use a panamax size vessel which will contain about 4500 boxes here that is called as 4500 TEU and we have first generation second generation containers. Uh, vessels that you will describe towards the end of this lecture. For uh, example, I am giving uh, what is a ship definition, a large vessel that floats on water. It may look uh, simple, but uh, we have to define means you have to define like this only. We are defining compared to a boat, this is distinguished from a boat based on the size and cargo or passenger capacity. So, we have the sketch showing the ship and you try to practice the shape like this. This is the longitudinal section, this is the cross section of the ship. We have uh, the length between perpendiculars that is from this point to this point that is length between perpendiculars from the aft end to forward end this is overall length this is called as L O A overall length this is called as L B P. Then we have the molded depth from the top of the vessel to the bottom of the vessel which is called as the keel that is called as molded depth. Then we have the draft from the water line to the keel then from the water line to the top of the vessel that is called as the free boat. So, this is the definition of the ship and we will discuss about uh, the other uh, features of a vessel in the next class. Thank you.